Osweiler, welcome. Thank you. Such Thank short, you for having me. Oh, uh, yeah, short notice, and I know you're busy today, and I uh, sure appreciate you coming on. Thank you. So tell us about this. So Obamacare, um, the way I understand it, right, they have three, in, if, if nobody is paid uh, for three months, they're dropped off the rolls. Right. Okay. So that's a, that's a part of the law. And in early May, the administration put out their enrollment statistics for the first round of Obamacare and uh, said, you know, 8 million people and um, and then told reporters essentially that we're we don't know when the next report is coming out and uh, on the enrollment and so you know my sense of the matter is that they do not want to disclose the dropping enrollment numbers because I feel fairly certain that the enrollment numbers are probably dropping because yes just as you say if they have not paid their premium after three months they are automatically uh, disenrolled and individuals could choose um, the, to unenroll themselves. You know, if they get a job, they get something else, they look at the premium and they go, you know, I'm hardly ever sick. Why do I want to pay this thing? And so, you know, there's this lull in here between the end of the first season of open enrollment and the new enrollment, which starts in November. And if they were excited about their statistics so that they could say, we've topped 8 million, you know, we're headed up, right? You'd think that they would want to announce this, but yeah. they haven't, which makes me think that they're hiding a lower number. Well, I would say they're definitely hiding a lower number because this is an administration that takes a victory lap uh, about anything and everything possible. And I would be uh, shocked that they wouldn't be taking a few victory laps right now if these numbers were holding do you have any idea of how many of those enrollees are have been added since January 1st to Medicaid? Do you know that? Has that come out? Um, I think, okay, I'm going to be, because I haven't looked at the number to refresh my memory, but it's, um, so I'm going to be probably wrong, but I know it's, I know it's over 3 million people that were added to Medicaid and that could be very low, but I know for sure it's over mm. 3 million people. Um, and the interesting thing about the 8 million number is that nobody has gone in and audited that number. It's like, mm. well, here's an administration that does not know exactly, or they have said that they didn't know exactly you know, how many people are enrolled, and they don't have the back-end machinery of the exchange to actually send money to the health plans or financially audit or anything. And so nobody has gone in to make sure that there's even 8 million people. So, you know, I'm like, how do we even know there's 8 million people in the first place? And then um, was it last week that they talked about the discrepancies of the data? Yes. And saying that like a, qu a quarter of them, 2 million of them, have data discrepancies that have to be uh, worked out to see if they really can legitimately be enrolled. Can they actually have subsidies? You know, that could knock off, you know, 2 million people or 1 million people right there. Mm. So I just think that, you know, as you said, the victory lap has been taken and they don't want to take anything away from the victory lap. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that this is an incredibly important number, and I, for one, along with uh, our listeners appreciate the fact that you are, um, you know, dogging this issue and trying to get some answers because, you know, it could mean the difference between someone running on the platform of repealing, you know, one of the arguments of the Democrats, this is just my opinion, one of the arguments of Democrats is going to be forget about repeal. It's going to be absolutely impossible because what are you going to do with the 8, 10, 12 million people? that have already enrolled. You're going to put them out on the street. You don't have anything to do with them, and it's going to become, uh, in the minds of some Republicans, it's going to become a political uh, uh, hot potato they're not going to want to mess with. But this could make all the difference in the world if here we are some six months later now, uh, almost, uh, that you know they don't have the 8 million, that they have more like 6 million or 5 million, 3 million being on Medicaid, um, is going to have a devastating, uh, could have a devastating uh, impact and a real negative consequence for uh, the law in, in the hopes that 2016 we're going to see some changes. 
Right. Right, yeah. If we don't know the numbers, we really don't know what's happening. And and just the fact that they went silent on this, so, you know, it's just like, okay, now the public, we're going to keep the public in the dark. We've had our high moment. Now we're now we're going to go silent. We're not going to say anything. You know, by virtue of that fact, you know, uh, I mean, the, the government can release statistics on a week-by-week -week basis. They can do it on a month-by-month -month basis. They, it's it's not like we don't have the technology, right? Right. So wherever they got the eight million from, right. which is again, I don't even know if it's eight million, but wherever they got it from, they could certainly take, uh, they could certainly pull up those numbers again and come up with mm. a new set of numbers. But they have chosen not to, and they have told reporters that they have no idea when their next announcement of enrollment numbers is going to be. And they could be timing it for, you know, I don't know if you uh, recall this, but there are special, and there's what's called special enrollment period, which is really an ongoing period. If you have something special in your life, like you, you have a new baby, you got married, you got divorced, lost your job, that sort of thing, you can enroll in Obamacare during this uh, time between the first enrollment period and the next enrollment period. So, you know, they could be timing their next announcement in hopes that more people will enroll from these special events and um, and that will counter whoever has dropped off. Because already, I think it was Oregon, that um, already had lost uh, several thousand people because either they hadn't paid the amount or they had, you know, left on their own. But, you know, so th I'm sure this is happening elsewhere mm. where people are disenrolling or, or being disenrolled themselves. Do you know of any uh, news agency or any organization out there that is filing any, um, you know, uh, a filing under the Freedom of Information Act to try to get these numbers? Is anybody, has anybody stepped up to do that yet? Um, not that I have heard, but our uh, press release was covered yesterday by Politico. And, um, and so to me, what that says is Politico is wondering, too, yeah. where are these yeah. numbers? Yeah. You know, and, and since we put out the press release, it was an opportunity for them to put it out there. And, and basically, you know, it's sort of like we want the numbers, too. <laughs> well, you know, so um, yeah. so I haven't heard that anybody's doing it, but that's not to say that somebody isn't isn't it, and it, just, it yeah. hasn't become public yet yeah. or uh, somebody has is in the process of doing it. You know, it's possible that nobody is. But, you know, these are, you know, the media, they. They like to go after the news, and when they're being shut out, you know, they've got the lawyers, et cetera, to go and file the Freedom of Information Act and do it. But sometimes that can be a process. Sometimes you can't get that very quickly. On the other hand, they have the pressure to press, right? Well, they could continue exactly. to say, you know, we filed, and they just won't give it to us. Well, I'm wondering where the conservative leadership is, if there is any. I hate to use that word leadership, but where, where the conservative uh, legislators are that aren't demanding this information. I mean, why aren't they demanding the information uh, so that so that they can get a handle on it? I mean, it seems to me that uh, they should be, you know, this should be a rallying point uh, for for conservative uh, uh, legislators. Well, sometimes I think when something is not in the news, you yeah. tend to forget yeah. about it, right? Yeah. You got yeah. all these other pressing things, and then it's got to be something to, you know, uh, get your brain to just suddenly go, oh yeah, wait. Right, we haven't right. uh, we haven't gotten any numbers. What's happening? What's yeah. happening here with this program? Yeah. Now I think it's um, one thing that is it's not exactly related, but kind of is that Colorado has decided to implement. I hope I've got the right state right here. I just read it. Uh, Colorado has decided to implement a fee on uh, the insurance policies of a dollar twenty five cents for every person that's enrolled to help pay for the cost of the exchange. And, you know, part of what that means to me is that Colorado doesn't have enough enrollees to pay uh, the price of the exchange. And, of course, all the exchanges, all the state exchanges, and Colorado has a state exchange, all the state exchanges are looking at the fact that all the federal dollars go away at the end of this year. Hmm. So there is no more federal money coming to support the exchanges um, after December 31st. And so for those exchanges that are not folding, you know, Oregon's folding, Massachusetts thinking of folding, and, and uh, Nevada's thinking of folding. So, But for those who aren't folding, 
they're thinking, where are we going to get the money from, if, particularly if we do not have enough enrollees? And Medicaid enrollees aren't the good enrollees, right? Right, they're, right. <laughs> right. They, need, they need the Obamacare right. enrollees to pay the price yeah. for operating the exchange, which is in the millions millions of dollars. In Minnesota, it was uh, estimated to be in the first year or two in the 55 to $60 million a year no. to run it. Wow. So, they're, you know, they're looking for this money and health plans. The other thing about health plans is they have these uh, th- this three year, uh, these three years where they are essentially um, they're, they, uh, if, if they do not raise their premiums too much, they will get a, a break. There will be more money coming to them from unknown sources, um, either from the funds that are part of Obamacare or outside, because the department wasn't exactly clear. It's like we will find the funds from somewhere to make you whole. So the, the health plans are not raising their, aren't likely to raise their premiums, even though they should for what Obamacare is costing, mm-hmm. but because the department has said we will find money from somewhere to pay you so that you don't do that, that whole thing is to drive people into the exchanges because the exchanges, if they don't have enough people, are financially right. going to find it very difficult to survive. Well, I think states in general are going to uh, be in big, big trouble in 2000 and, uh, the end of 2015, by the end of 2015, when when uh, the government uh, drops their subsidies for Medicaid, uh, it's going to be huge for right. states. I think they're going to be in huge trouble. I think this is a, um, you know, a, a consequence that uh, most states, at least 37 of them that I know, uh, fiscally cannot uh, bear that burden. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. And it's amazing to me that states have not had the uh, foresight to take that into consideration and quickly uh, and, and happily put as many people as they can onto Medicaid, not realizing that at some point in time they're going to have to foot the bill for this. And frankly, too many states are not going to be able to do it. It's going to be very, very uh, interesting times when that and happens. And, you know, the worst thing about <clears throat> I don't know if it's the worst thing, um, but one really bad thing about this is once you have expanded Medicaid, yes. that is your base number, yes. and then yes. the department can – completely strip you of all Medicaid, yep. federal Medicaid dollars yep. if you dare to lower that number. Right. It's going to be, it's <laughs> so going to be a nightmare. So you lock yourself into yep. a, higher, um, a higher number that the state is going to be responsible for if you hope to have it uh, uh, partially funded or significantly funded by the federal government into the future. And they all knew it. This was all available information. They right. should have all been able to uh, figure this out and you know, just just didn't even, I, I don't know what they were thinking, I, but not able, again, one of the biggest issues that I have with state and federal governments is they have no ability to think through the unintended consequences of what they're doing uh, in the long term. Twala Brace, uh, Twala, I sure appreciate you being back here with us to give us some clarity on this. You'll be back, I know, uh, the week after next on Thursday, and we sure appreciate that uh, you're here with us always. Twyla Brace, Thanks. president. Thanks so much, Dan. You're welcome. President, co founder uh, of Citizens Council for Health Freedom. And, folks, you see as you listen to Twyla and you hear her every week here, you need to check out her website. Make sure that you're in tune with it, that you're seeing, uh, checking on it on a regular basis. Make sure you do that. It's CCH Freedom, cchfreedom.org, cchfreedom.org. Make sure you check that out. Twyla, thank you again. Sure, appreciate it, and we'll talk to you soon.